Hey Future Chester Accountant, you are welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for always stopping by. If you are new here, kindly click the subscribe button. And if you are returning, thank you so much for always stopping by. Please share this video to as many groups, people, DMs, everywhere you know and everyone you know. So today's class will basically be a continuation of the previous classes that we have had. And where we did, in our previous class, we actually looked at the the financial statement analysis and we also reviewed the question for November 2022 diet that is the case study on the banking sector so today we will not really really be going too deep into the question because we did that in our previous class so today we'll just basically be looking at the financial data analysis part so I just want us in our I noticed that I didn't really like talk much about the question like the financial data analysis area, we basically focused on the financial statement analysis, which was fine because the class was on financial statement analysis, right? But today we'll be looking at the question on financial data analysis briefly, and then we'll go into the practical aspects. Please, if you have any question concerning the previous class or this class, please use the comment section. Let me know. And if you like me to explain anything or create any video, just let me know, okay? So let's start. So in we saw that in our previous class, when we reviewed the question, we saw that KMB, QD Microfinance Bank, had serious cap recapitalization issues. That they have serious capitalization issues because they haven't met the bar, like the minimum capital requirements of CBN. They have not met their requirements, and there's like an urgent pressing need to actually meet their requirements because there's even pressure, tremendous pressure, like they said, amongst the directors. So they really need to meet the one billion era bar, and they are far from it. As we saw in the last class, they had about three hundred million plus of million of what of equity, and they, they still need to go to one billion. That's a huge gap, right? So, in in the message that was sent by the MD, the email that was sent by the MD of KMB, we saw that they talked about considering two recapitalization options, like two options of probably trying to raise capital so that they will not lose their license or get sanctioned by CBN. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. That's the requirement two, which is the financial data analysis. So the, the recapitalization options, there are actually two proposals that were given to us. So the first one is for about like an acquisition, an acquisition, and this is from the Oulagba family. Olagba family, yes. Olagba family, so that they are telling us that they want to acquire. Us. So let's look, take a little uh, peek at what they are talking about. What are the terms, the conditions, and all that? Because it's not just about oh, we're desperate. Yes, our client is desperate, but we also have to look at the proposals. You can't just say oh, proposal has come, jump on it. You have to assess it right and give them an honest and professional advice. So we're told that. We, they submit they, so, so this this the first thing we have to note is that this is a non-binding proposal like it's, we are still considering it's like it's not binding in any way it's not oh because we have sent the proposal proposal to all them we must follow it or something no it's just a non-binding proposal and the proposal is to acquire all the ordinary shares so they want to acquire all the ordinary shares so this is an acquisition proposal they want to acquire hundred percent of KMB. And but then if they acquire 100 percent of KMB, they would actually it will actually cost an injection of 1.5 billion naira equity. That's actually nice, right? Because even before going for that, that's, that's kind of nice because we are looking for one billion, <laughs> or let's just say we're looking for about 700 million because we have about 300 million plus in our account. So let's just say we're looking for a bit over 600 million thereabouts, and somebody is coming and saying they're giving us 1.5 billion. That's good, but let's still chill. Let's not just jump on it. Let's look at other things, right? So, the terms of condition which, the terms of conditions which are prepared to pursue the acquisition are summarized below. We have confidence in your ability to consummate an acquisition as outlined below. So, the buyer is the um, Olowolagba family. They intend to use a special purpose vehicle for the purpose of pursu pursuing. Purpose of pursuing the acquisition of the KMB. So the purchase price is 1.5 billion naira cash injection. And um, okay, let's highlight this. 
then they are confident that they can actually they can offer timely and timely secure adequate financing, which is actually what we need. In fact, we time is not on our side. Time is an enemy of PMB right now. And or the Olo the Olo Lagba family is promising and they are confident that they can actually give us like if we agree to this proposal, the funding is ASAP, like we're not going to slack because we actually need to meet the deadline of CDN. Then further on, they told us that they, but then they also told us that we are, we are prepared to finalize definitive agreement on the condition, now there's a condition, the condition that we obtain a no objection letter from CBN. Now, a no objection letter basically is, is a letter that is required by the Security and Exchange Commission, basically, when you, for measure of banks, measure acquisition of banks, now there is sort of like a letter you must submit to that is recommended by the SEC, that's the Security and Exchange Commission, and you have to get a letter from CBN. So now that is when they want to make and acquire. So now they're telling us that the the agreement must be can only become final or definite if we actually obtain that letter. But then we're not even discuss anything. You're not even telling us oh what do we think or it's like it's kind of rigid and it's kind of like it's unrealistic, it's unflexible, it's just I don't even know how to explain it because you're not telling us that we should go and collect the letter. We have not had any prior agreement. This is just a proposal and this is not a binding proposal. So they're telling us that you want to be collect an, a no objection letter from CBN before you can finalize, finalize it. Okay. Let's still look at it. They also told us that they're a well known family that has business interests. Oh, good for them. <laughs> non binding commitment. This proposal co constitutes only a preliminary indication of our interest and does not constitute a binding commitment. With respect to the acquisition of the bank, such a commitment will result only in an execution of a definite agreement and will be on terms provided in the in, will be on terms provided in such documentation. So basically, what I'm just trying to say that they will not go further until we get the no objection letter from CBN. Simple. So let's just wrap up and quickly go to the second proposal. The second proposal was from Network Nigeria, Network Microfinance Bank. Sorry, Network Microfinance Bank Limited. So let's see what they said. So they said that they have an intent to merge. Okay, so this one is a major proposal. It's not an acquisition like all of our family. So they want to merge with us. And based on the preliminary review of our information from the bank, we are putting up a proposal to merge for a merger of the two banks. Our head office, however, is in Ikeda. Wow. That's a big problem. Why? You remember when we talked about, remember when we reviewed the question, our question review class, that we saw that KMB is a what? Is a state microfinance bank, right? It's a state microfinance bank. And state microfinance banks are only authorized to operate within a particular state. Please, if you have not watched that video on, on the question review, please make sure you do that because it's like, it's arranged. So if you're not watching this one, you might not really be able to catch up. But I, I hope I'll try as much as possible to carry you along. But please watch that video so you can be well informed about all the things that I've discussed in the previous classes. So now this is actually a very, very big issue because we cannot operate outside of Abiyokuta Okuta State. And this merger is, this company is in Lagos State. How do we want to do it? Do we close down our, our own and move to Lagos? Do they close down their own and move to Abiyokuta? So how on earth are we actually going to achieve this? It's a big issue. So the last one I told us, okay, they gave us shareholders on impaired losses, 550 million. Oh, 550 million. Okay, but... <laughs> I've not really calculated anything yet, but we're looking for 1 billion and we have 300 million plus. And I'm telling us that you have 550 million. That does not look like it's going to be sufficient, right? But let's not, let's take two pills. Let's not jump into conclusion. But this measure is looking like it's not going to work. But let's still be calm and look at it. So they have assets of 1.2 billion. They have liability of 400,000. Credit risk portfolio of the bank of is at 25 cents. Hmm. All right, so now let's now go to the main, main deal. So yes, so let's start now. So in our previous class, we actually looked at the financial statement analysis already. I showed you how to the report basically on the financial statement analysis, and we also look at the append. We also looked at the appendix of the, the financial statement analysis as well. And just a little bit, like we looked at the executive summary a little bit, and I said I was going to look at it a bit deeper in this class. So we're going to be doing that as well. So the outline for, for today's class just is just basically the executive summary, 
the financial data analysis and the appendix on the financial data analysis. So let's start. So before we get to the exercise summary, <laughs> to summar we are summarizing what we have done, right? So let's go to the main, main work. So let me just get this done, okay? All right, so let's just get all this in black so that we can actually follow through. All right, so the first proposal, like remember, was proposal on the Olowolagba family. And the proposal was basically to acquire all the shares, right? And they also gave us some information about it. But the information that was given to us from the proposal, the acquisition proposal, we didn't really need to calculate so much. So we, did, we wouldn't even need to do an appendix on it because it's like, oh, we just explain, recommend, give conclusion and all of that. So we're going to be talking about that now. So this is how you start your financial data analysis section of your report. So you have a title, a title, coin the title from the requirements that the requirements asked us to evaluate the two recapitalization proposals. So I coined the title from it, okay, the evalu re evaluation of the recapitalization options, that's the proposals. Just coin something that makes sense. There's no hard and fast rule about it. It's not, oh, there's no one way. Depending on the requirement, just try to coin something that would actually be okay. I can give a little intro here. So I said the two capitalization options were evaluated and the operational and strategic issues related to the two options available were considered. The first, the first option was the proposal to acquire all the ordinary shares of TNB for 1.5 billion by the Olowo Lagba family. And the second option was the proposal from the from Networth Microfinance Bank to merge with KNB. So this introduction i just basically just take it from the requirement the requirements was one i just used i just coined something out to get so it's not something hard or something so the requirement asks us to carry out evaluate the proposal and talk about the operational strategic issues so i just that's what i just talked about a little in the introduction so the proposal one was the acquisition the proposal one was the acquisition all right so the first proposal was so i'm reading now the first proposal was from the Olowolagba family to acquire all the ordinary shares of KMB for 1.5 billion Naira. The proposal was based on the condition that KMB obtains a no objection letter from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Hence, the proposal to acquire KMB is not definite until the condition is met. So can you see what I'm, I'm doing now? I'm basically just giving an overview of the acquisition proposal because you know that the people you are preparing this report for, they are the board of directors, the big guys, right? So they will not really have so much time to actually sit down and what, look at all the proposals and everything. So they can, some of them may just have time to look at the report. So the fact that they don't have time to go through the proposal that was sent by Ola or the Olowolagba family or any proposal does not mean that they don't deserve to actually know what the proposal entails. So before you go into, oh, the proposal should not be accepted, the proposal should be accepted, the proposal is viable, is not viable, or whatever, give a little overview of what the proposal or the project is about. Yet, no mark will be given to you for just listing information and just dropping it down. But at least you have to give an overview, right? So that's, that shows that don't write so much of story, 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 story. Don't dwell on it. It's not that you start writing a whole page on what the the ITAN examiners already know. They're the ones that gave you the information. You're just interpreting it back to them. You don't need to write just a little, few lines here and there is okay, but just give a little you get overview of what they're asking you to do. So, although the acquisition will result in an injection of 1.5 billion Naira equity, which is above the minimum required capital of 1 billion Naira, and the, and the family is confident of timely financing, which is really important for KMB to meet the CBN deadline, there are some clauses that may hinder the success of the acquisition, and these clauses have to be considered properly. So I'm telling them that, okay, fine, yes, the Oluwalagba family proposal or the acquisition proposal from them would obviously help us because we actually need 1 billion naira and they're giving us 1.5. So that's a good one, right? A good one. But then we cannot just jump and conclude. That's why we are accountants, that's why we are analysts. If the company just wanted to jump and accept or reject a proposal or anything, they won't ask us to review it. But they're asking us to review it because they're like, ah, let's not just look at it on the surface level. Let's look at it deeply and analyze it so that we'll see if in the long run this thing is actually viable or this thing is profitable to us. So we're telling them now, okay, fine. 
the proposal would result in the required amount of capital that you need and they apart from that we also need the money asap we need it fast because we don't want to be a victim of the tbn sanctions right and they are also telling us that they are confident that they will give us money fast but aside all that we also have to look at other things so there are two major clauses that may hinder the success of the acquisition so we are looking at that now first of all according to the cbn guidelines a state microfinance bank is authorized to operate within a state however the Ololaba family is in Lagos State and the, and Kudu Microfinance Bank is in Ogun State. So the first thing is, there's a problem of location. The Ololaba family, they are in Lagos State. Kudu Microfinance Bank is in Ogun State. I remember when we talked, when we read it in our question review class, that we talked about it, that we said that a state microfinance bank is a must is authorized to operate only within a particular state or the FCC. Remember that we said that, right? So now, if we are going to be acquired, is it that we are going to close down every branch we have in Abia Okuta Ogun State and then go to Lagos State? Or is Olu, the Olulagwa family, are they going to come down to Ogun State? How is it going to be? Do you understand? Because there's a location problem here. The different locations, the different locations pose as a problem because KMB is a state microfinance bank authorized to operate in one state. Secondly, the acquisition may not be possible because CBA will most likely not approve it because of the clause above. And the no objection letter from CBN is required by the SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission, to process bank measures and acquisition. I explained earlier that the Security and Exchange Commission they need the no objection letter from CBN to actually process measures and acquisition of banks. So if CBN is likely not to approve the letter because of the clause because cbn before obviously before they approve the letter or give us the letter they will actually look at some guides look at their guidelines to see if oh we have, have we met some requirements and if probably they are reviewing our company they're reviewing the company that wants to acquire us and i see oh one is in lagos one is in Ogun state and they are and the company that is in question is a state microfinance bank there's high likelihood that they will not approve the no objection letter and they don't like my family is saying that before the Agreements can become binding and definite that we have to obtain the no objection letter. So how do we cross that? How do we cross that hindrance? How do we cross that barrier? How do we merge it? Do we quickly close down KMB before we apply for the no objection letter in Ogun State and move to Lagos? Or how do we do it? So it's just basically hard because we have been here for many years. You know, we read in our question review class. See, KMB was from from a community bank. They moved to State Microfinance Bank after fulfilling partial agreements and so there's a lot that we have actually gone through so just closing up everything and just moving down to where so how do we do it so there's great tendency that cbm might not actually give us the letter because of that clause in addition the proposal is to acquire all the ordinary shares of the Olula, of kmb rather which is 100 percent equity this has to be considered carefully as if accepted the Olubolagba family will have total control of KMB and this can alter the management structure and current operations of KMB. Therefore, this proposal should not be accepted as it is rigid and has a lot of unfavorable effects. Because aside the fact that we are we have location problem or location issue that we have to deal with, and in in addition to that, they are telling us that we must obtain the letter before they give us a definite agreement. Aside that, they are not telling us you want to come and collect 100% of our equity. Haba, that's a lot. That's a lot. Fine, we are looking for a desperate. The directors are under tremendous pressure to actually get like get out of this problem and to avoid sanctions from CBN. But we are trying to get out of a problem. We are not trying to get out of business. We are coming to acquire 100% of our equity. Obviously, if they acquire 100% of our equity, they will have total say they can change the management structure change the business change everything so this acquisition has a lot of rigid unfeasible or rigid and unfeasible clauses that if you don't consider very well to actually give us a lot of issues so that's why this problem they should not go accept it because if they, if they accept it even if they say okay they want to they don't mind giving all their all the all what they have worked for to the low lag by family they don't mind it but if you don't mind it how about the management structure okay how about the location 
So you understand? So there are a lot of things that so it's just best not to dabble into that problem. It should not just affect you, it should just be on their own. <laughs> All right, so there are, the second proposal is from Network Microfinance Bank. You might be thinking about the network. Okay, now in this case, now we have a little calculation that we can do because now we're looking at a merger here. We're looking at a merger, so we have to get the merged value, the combined value, right? So let's go to our appendix. We actually have to calculate some things here. We actually have to, so we have the appendix. Here. So the appendix two. This is appendix two because appendix one was the for the financial statement analysis, which we treated in our previous class. If you have not watched that video, please watch it. This class is a continuation, like I said earlier. So if you have not watched that video, please watch it and follow through. So this is appendix two for the financial data analysis. So information was extracted from exhibit 10. I'm just trying to let you know where all the information was extracted from and exhibit 12 and all of that. So they gave us information, right? So we have the Kudi Microfinance Bank, the merge statement of financial provision. So now we have assets. Now the most important thing now for us to get this one when we want to consider a merger, we consider how our company was before the merger and how it will be after the merger. That's the individual values and the combined values, right? Or the merged values. But now in this case, we're most concerned about the equity. Yes, the asset is important to us, the liability is important to us, but what we are most concerned about is the equity. Now in our assets, we completed this asset, this asset figure. We have completed it. We calculated it in our previous class. That's our financial statement analysis class. So if you want to know how we arrived at this figure, just watch that video, the financial statement analysis class. Watch it and you get how we actually got this, this figure. Then we also told that net worth has 1.2 million. And then our liability. Now, remember that. Remember when we did our accounting equation? When we did our accounting equation, when we did our, in our corporate reporting, in our financial reporting that we know that okay assets is equals to total assets is equals to total equity plus total liability now remember when we used to use t format that's the old accounting way of arranging your statements of profit and loss and your financial statement basically that when we want to do the balance sheet now i'm using balance sheets because that was the previous name that was used but now we are using statement of financial position right so when we used to do the balance sheet now, let's say you're holding your piece of paper and so I'm, I'm talking, when I say left hand side, right hand side, I'm imagining a piece of paper in front of me so you can do that. So your right hand side, that's the right hand side of your paper. Now you have your current asset, fixed asset and current asset. Then the left hand side of your paper, you have your equity and then you have your non-current liabilities and current liabilities, right? So the, the two sides must balance out. That implies that the total asset, which is the fixed and the current asset, is equal to the total liabilities plus the total equity. Do you understand? So total assets, so that, that's this is what I'm trying to say here. Total assets is equal to total liabilities plus total equity, right? So and the total assets of net worth are one billion, one point two billion rather. They have one point two billion assets, and the, the total are liability from the empowerment fund for women is four hundred million. That's what they told us in the question. We saw it, right? And total equity is five fifty. So now let's not look at this. Would this actually equate to? It's just we're just doing trial and error. Let's just see because you know we are they're giving us information like this, and we actually have to compute it very very well so that we won't make a mistake. So that if our total asset is one point two billion, right? And we're saying total asset now. So are we not saying now does one point two billion is it equals to four hundred million plus? 550 million no it's not equal to because 400 million plus 550 million is 950 million so there's a 250 million difference so that means the total asset is not equal to total liability there's a 250 million difference and the basically the difference of that 250 million is an additional liability and why can't it be an additional equity because if you're saying that the left hand side must be equal to the right hand side so the left hand side which constitutes the equity and the liabilities could either be 250 could be either be equity or either be liabilities. So why are we not concluding that is a liability? We are concluding it's a liability because equity can only change if there's an injection, there's an there's an injection of share, either probably through right issue or through issue of new shares. And they don't tell us anything like that. So they don't tell us that there was an injection through right issue or issue of new shares. So obviously it's going to be a liability. And the liability would be a customer deposit. So there was just that means that's 250 
thousand in the case a, an additional customer deposit that's just basically what i'm just trying to tell you do you understand so now if you write that again so we have the 400 million plus 500 million plus x and this x is 250 million so that 250 million is an additional liability which is a customer deposit and which we added here so do you understand so it will increase the combined customer deposit basically so just for us to just get the actual figure if you have any question just let me know in the comment section i'll be here to explain anything that you any question that you have all right so that's how we got so now our liability now is 400 million but it's actually not 400 million it's 650 million because now there's an additional liability of 250 million but then they did not give us expressly and this is this this shows your ability to discern information and your ability to extract information and use the data available to you. So, if you are using 400 million, you are wrong because the liability is actually not 400 million but 650 million. So, that's the reason why you actually have to consider this thing very, very well. So, that's and the liability from Kudi Microfinance Bank, which we got from the from the from the XBs, same B here was 1.5. Seven one billion five hundred seventy-five thousand eight hundred and twelve. Do you understand? So that's just the liability for this. Then the total liability for next was six fifty. Then equity. We calculated this equity in our statement of financial statement of financial. Sorry, our <laughs> our financial statement analysis class. Sorry, our financial statement analysis class. We have completed this already, so you can check that class and look at how we actually got this figure. And they told us that the equity of net worth is 550. But then the major thing after all these stories, 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 it will actually arrive at the minimum required rate or the minimum required capital. No, because now look at it, so having a total equity, combined equity, merged equity of 770.051. That's 773 million and 51,000, which is not equal to what we need. It's not really like minimum. You said minimum capital. That's one billion. <laughs> that means obviously we are actually aiming for higher. And we're not. We've not even gotten. I've not even met the bar. So that shows that this measure is not even going to solve our problem. Because are we going to merge with your bank? Get seven that seven three million. Try to look for how to merge with another company or how to be. Do you understand? So it's not even going to solve our problem. So let's just even eliminate it first. So let's go and interpret it. So the proposal from Let's Watch Microfinance Bank to merge with KMB. Okay, the second proposal was, a, was from Network Microfinance Bank to merge with KMB. The Network Microfinance Bank has an unimpaired shareholders fund worth 550 million, total asset of 1.2 billion, and liabilities of 650 million. So, this is just basically we just summarizing what we have and everything. Then we we'll don't talk about it too much because no mark will be given to you for extra information, but you still have to talk a little about it, right? Now, this proposal was assessed considering the combined value of KMB. And net worth microfinance bank after the measure. The combined assets, combined equity, and combined liabilities were completed in appendix two. That is merging your appendix with your work. We did it in our appendix, our class on appendices. If you have not watched that class, you can just check it out and watch it in my on my channel. The class on appendices, how to link your appendix with your work and everything, just to make it look professional. So the proposed measure was considered by KMB because of the urgent need to meet the minimum capital requirement of one billion naira. However, the completed major, the completed merged total equity amounted to 773 million and 51,000, which is 226 million 949,000 short of the required amount. This implies that the measure with network microfinance bank will not solve our capitalization problems. It will not solve it. You know, when we were analyzing the question, I was saying that 550, we have, <laughs> do you understand? So, Obviously, we already knew that it was not going to actually solve it. So that's like a big problem. It is not worthy that the 2021 financials that were used for this analysis have not yet been audited. It is assumed that the unaudited financial statements will not be significantly different from the audited financial statements. So I've told you before, once you see management account or you are seeing just financial statement, the first thing that you should note, the inspirational skeptic, the first thing that you should question, I must talk about is the fact that that account is not yet audited because there's great tendency that after auditing the account, the auditors will send a management letter, and the management letter will contain some things that the management needs to edit or correct. 
and eventually the auditor financial statement might not be the same as the unaudited. But of course, we're assuming that it's not going to be significantly different. Significantly, that means probably even little different, probably just a little here and there. Maybe we had 22% and there we're having 22.5%, still within the range, right? So you have to state it there. However, with the Michael Finance Bank, it says case Michael Finance Bank authorized. In fact, we should not say however in this place. Let's even use an addition because the first problem is that the first problem is that could you, uh, the capitalization problem is not solved because it's less than what we actually need. In addition, could you micro finance bank is a state micro finance bank that is authorized to operate within one state. A merger with net worth micro finance bank will not be possible because they operate in Lagos State and they are also a state micro finance bank. Probably if net worth micro finance bank was probably a national micro finance bank or a bigger micro finance bank that had authority to operate in more than one state. Probably they could, we can really merge with them because we, they can say, oh, we are merging on behalf of net worth. Net worth has the capacity to, you understand? But yet we are all state microfinance bank, just like we are. So we have, both of us are both restricted. You understand? So there's, it's difficult for us to actually come together. So for the matter to be possible, branches in either Lagos state or Ogun state have to be closed down to meet the guidelines for a state microfinance. So who is, there, who is going to be willing to close down? Who is going to be willing to close down? Are we going to close down or are they going to close down? So it's not possible. Like the measure is not feasible. Number one, probably if it, if it solved our recapitalization problem, probably we could have even be considering closing down or going to meet them. But it does not solve our problem. And apart from that, we're not going in our state. So it's just a total no, 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 no. So conclusion, the proposal from the Oluwalagba family is very rigid and contains a lot of unfavorable terms. As acquiring 100% of KMB will alter its management structure and operation. The proposal of merging with Network's microfinance bank is not viable as it does not solve the recapitalization problem. And the company currently operates in two different states. This is required, which is required according to the guidelines of Central Bank for a state microfinance. So they need to be within one state and they're operating in different states. So it's a no, 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 no. Do you understand? So the two projects are just no or proposals. However, the the, with a total equity value of 223 million and 51,000, KMB can downscale to a tier one unit microfinance bank whose capital requirement is 200 million. Because why all this problem? We don't have capacity. Do you understand? We are trying to, we don't have the, the required minimum capital. We have a deadline, there's tremendous pressure in the organization. The directors, we have tried to put in, inject, um, inject capital. We have tried acquisition, it's not working. We have tried measure, it's not working. Then downscale. Fine, it's not okay. We are looking, we're aiming for something higher, but downscale, go down to a lower level where the capital requirement is 200 million. At least they have 223 already, so they can actually meet it. You understand? So KMB also can also raise more capital through right issue. If the equity raised from right issue is insufficient, KMB can raise more funds through issue of shares if they know that they don't want to downscale. That's another option. So recommendation, consider that scaling from state microfinance bank to tier one microfinance bank, then they should raise more capital through issue of shares or right issue. They should adopt cost control measures. You understand? So to reduce, so this is like the, to reduce loss that is increasing within deficit. Do you understand? Because now the reason why they are actually having low equity is basically because of the high retained earnings, retained deficit, because they actually injected capital. They're selling different capital, but because of the high retain deficit, it just went down all over again. So they should reject the proposal from the lower labor family and they should not merge with network because it's not viable. It's not viable. So that's and don't forget to number your pages. You can see that I number I number I numbered my page XX because you know we have done the financial statement analysis class and this is like a continuation. So just like a number, just so that you can just see that okay, page XX is a number, it's not like page XX, so please. It's just like a number, like you get so that you can know that you're supposed to number it. So let's go through the executive summary a bit. Now, this is an executive summary. I've had an executive summary class, so you can just watch the video on executive summary class to know how well to prepare your executive summary. But so in this class, so I'm not really going to talk much because I've done all the explanation in the previous class. So you give just like we said in the previous class. If you have not watched that video, don't worry, that's not a problem. Don't have to say, oh, I don't know it, just watch the video, it's fine. Then we coined 
the beginning we told them what the purpose of the report and the summarization of the two the two requirements the objective of the report was also stated the assumption and then the methodology as well the assumption what can it be assumption once you see draft management account a uh, draft financial statement management account then your assumption should one assumption is raised is that the unaudited uh, audited financial statement will not be significantly different then we summarized the financial statement analysis we did a summary of that then a summary of the requirements one requirement two rather the first proposal and then the second proposal as well then we have a merged conclusion a conclusion a merged conclusion of both the financial statement analysis and the financial data analysis and a merged recommendation and your your executive summary should not be more than two pages so that's just basically all about your financial data analysis. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed creating it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Please don't share. Don't keep this video to yourself. Share with every and everyone. Anyone that you know that will benefit from it. Please, if you have not subscribed, please don't forget to, don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And don't forget to give my video a thumbs up. And I will see you in my next class. Can you guess what I'm preparing for you? Hmm. Even me, I don't even know yet, but I know something will come up, right? And if you have any question, if you know whatever, if you have like, if probably you ask, want me to create a video or something, just let me know in the comment section, alright? So I'll see you in my next class. Till then, stay safe. Bye.